Hi everyone, and welcome to this quick coder tutorial where we're going to see how to improve the inspector of your C-sharp scripts in Godot. And as usual, since we'll be coding our logic in C-sharp, make sure that you have a version of Godot with .NET enabled. So obviously, the first and most essential tool that we need to discuss here is the export attribute. This is what you need to add to your C-sharp variables in order to have them show in the inspector, and to therefore be able to assign them directly in the editor. So whenever you add this export attribute to either a C-sharp field or property in your code, it will appear in the inspector. However, don't forget that contrary to the script, C-sharp projects need to be recompiled for changes in the code to take effect. That's why, after adding this attribute to a variable in your script, you should go to the MS Build tab and use the Build Project option to manually recompile the project. And then the variable will show at the top of the inspector of nodes that have your script attached. Also, it's super important to note that the export attribute is the only reason the variable gets saved and exposed. If you're coming from the world of Unity Game Dev, for example, you'll notice that making your variable public doesn't auto-expose it here. I personally think it's a good idea, because the public, protected and private keywords in c -sharp are related to data encapsulation, and so to making sure that the objects in your code are only readable and writable to the classes that absolutely need to. This is key in having a robust and maintainable code base, and I believe that to some extent, mixing this concept with the fact of showing variables in the inspector can be sometimes a bit confusing. So at least with Godot, there's just no connection. A variable can be public or private, and exposed or not exposed. And the nice thing is that even more complex types like resources or nodes and all their derived types can be exported too, so you're not limited to just basic c -sharp types. Don't forget that using the exact type of resource that you want here, in this input, will reduce the list of possibilities, and it will help the creators in your team pick the right kind of object every time. So all in all, exporting your c -sharp variables is the fastest and most robust way of ensuring the creators in your team can adapt the references and tweak the project without always having to come back to the code. But did you know that adding the export attribute to a c -sharp variable is just the first step? In fact, Godot allows us to pass options to this attribute. And thanks to those additional settings, you can really improve your inspector and make it more secure. The idea is to use the property hint object to specify some extra specialization of the field and have Godot use an even more appropriate and usually more constrained input in the inspector. This way, you share that the value defined in the editor is valid for your code. For example, by adding the property hint.file option to the export attribute on a string variable, you're telling Godot that this input shouldn't just contain any string, but it should contain a path to a file. Note that by default, those paths can't be global to the entire computer. They'll only be relative to your Godot project root directory. Global paths are only available in tool mode. Okay, now if you'd rather reference a path to a directory instead of a file, you can also use the property hint.dir. And if you want to apply a filter on your search, so that only some files are pickable in this input, you can use a wildcard pattern, along with the property hint.file, to specify to Godot what files are acceptable. Typically, this can allow you to specify the type of extension, so the type of file, that can be used in this input. Similarly, if you're working with integers, it can sometimes be interesting to restrict the value to a certain range which you can do with the aptly named property hint.range option. The trick is just to give it the minimum and maximum values in this format, so inside quotes and separated by commas, and you'll see that the inspector input instantly blocks you if you try to get out of this range. You can also add a third parameter to the range description to tell Kado what step to use, and better control the granularity of the values. Another really cool example of property hints is when using enums. 
because if you just need to have a specific list of options for one of your variables, you can actually use the property hint.enum option and pass in the different possible values in here. So no need to pre-create the enum anymore and add this type to your code. Now, of course, there are a few other particularities, settings, and property hint types that can be useful. So I highly recommend that you have a look at this page from the official docs that lists all the details on this tool. Here, I want to focus on a specific point that is a new feature of Godot 4.0, and that's the fact that we can now export nodes directly. Basically, before Godot 4, you couldn't directly reference and expose a node in a script. Rather, you had to use an intermediary node path variable to get the position of the node you wanted in the hierarchy, and then use this reference as the input value to the famous getNode built-in function to get back the real node that you were looking for. Though it was a cool step up from manually traversing your hierarchy and building the string path by hand, it was still one additional, somewhat annoying step. Now, actually, you might notice that in my previous tutorials from this series, even the more recent ones that use Godot 4, I did rely on NodePath, because I didn't want to dive into the details of this change, and the Godot team was kind enough to keep this old technique working too, to avoid having too many breaking changes to deal with. But in truth, it's of course way easier and quicker to just export the node directly, or even the type of component that you want to get on it, like this. To wrap up this tutorial, let's just see one last little tool that can help organize your script inspectors, the export group attribute. It's really simple to use. You just add this attribute above some variables in your code, and then, until you reuse it with another group name or with an empty string to break out, all the variables Godot encounters that have the export attribute will be put under this group in the inspector. And note that even if you skip a few blank lines before declaring your next variables, they will still be part of the same group. You can even nest subgroups inside using the export subgroup attribute to get an even finer organization of your inspector. And finally, note that if you really want to isolate some variables in the inspector, it's also possible to change their category with the export category attribute. So if you do this, you'll actually have another block in the inspector with just your variables inside. But Godot does warn us that this can result in pretty unexpected inspector layouts, since these categories also depend on class inheritance, so you should use this last tool carefully. Here you go, you now know a few tricks to creating more organized and more robust Godot inspectors for your C-sharp scripts. I hope you liked this tutorial and that it helped you understand the basics of C-sharp exports and hints, and if you enjoyed the video, feel free to like it and subscribe to the channel to not miss the next ones. And of course, don't hesitate to drop a comment with ideas of Godot tricks that you'd like to learn. As always, thanks a lot for watching, and take care.